Well, good morning to you all on this remembrance service. And as we come together this morning, we will be taking part in our way with the remembrance service. And we will be working towards 11 o'clock where we will have our two minutes silence. And I've invited various people to share readings with us, so that will happen throughout. And as we lead our way through the service this morning, we're going to be thinking about peace and the peace that Jesus brings and what that really means. So we're going to start our service together this morning by we're using the song Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. To his feet thy tribute bring. Ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. Who like thee his praise shall ring. Praise him, praise the everlasting King. And when we get to verse 3 it says Father he like he tends and spares us well our feeble frame he knows in his hands he gently bears us rescues us from all our foes let's stand together and we'll sure sing Restored, forgiven We're going to sing our second hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. And in the fourth verse, we read these words. So Trinity of love and power, O brethren, shield in danger's hour. From rock and tempest, fire and foe, protect them where, so where they go. And ever let their rise to thee, glad hymns of praise from land and sea. Number 11.
good sin. We're going to spend just a few moments in prayer. And as we consider this morning, I'm sure many of you already through this week have spent time thinking and praying and reflecting on remembrances past. For you, some of you very personally, there will be memories and loss. And when we think of our world today, we are very aware that we are still very much far from a peaceful situation. So for just a few moments, let us share some prayers together. And I'd invite maybe if you feel that you would like to share. But if not, for a moment, let's just enjoy these moments of quietness. Father, we just come before you this morning and we are very aware of so many who are taking part this morning in the act of remembrance. Father, we are aware that this week has been challenging for many of us and Lord as we have as spent moments in reflection Lord we're mindful of past years past conflicts and Lord today we are still very mindful of men and women who are still fighting and still on behalf of each country serving and Lord, we pray as we come together, Lord, we pray for peace, we pray for resolution and lasting times of peace within our worlds. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, your faith, true faith in you. O oh, Master, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Let's share this song together, please. Number 608. 608.
pure peace comes from above. It is a manifestation of selfless love. If you find you can forgive, you'll find that you can live in pure peace. Pure peace comes from deep inside when you get rid of foolish pride. Only when you can forgive will you find that you can live in pure peace. There are no excuses. There can be no blame. Just a realization that we're all loved the same. That like Jesus, we must forgive. And then we can live in pure peace. Pure peace cannot reign where judgment presides, where labels and hatred our world divides. We need to learn to forgive. Only then can we live in pure peace. Pure peace in a world that is dark and broken, where we have not learnt from the men that have fallen. Only when we start to forgive can we truly live in pure peace. That peace may be seen in the world today. Let it be so, dear Lord, I pray, that the gift of pure peace can be seen in each heart, so that slowly, day by day, the world will start to live in pure peace. Every year, as long as I can remember, we've used the lovely piece of music, Supreme Sacrifice, whenever I've attended memorial services with the band. And this morning I'd like us to use that song, and the words will be on the screen, we can sing together. I want to just bring your attention to verse 5. O risen Lord, O shepherd of our dead, whose cross was bought has bought them and whose staff has led. In glorious hope their proud and sorrowing land commits her children to those glorious hand, thy glorious hand. Let us use this song together please.
God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I lift my eyes to the hills from whence my help comes. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. We meet in the presence of God. We commit ourselves to working in penitence and faith, patience and reconciliation between the nations that all people may together live in freedom, justice and peace. We pray for all who in bereavement, disability and pain continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars and conflict, past and present, have been given and taken away. A poem by John McRae. In Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky the lark, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunlight glow, loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, from failing hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. They shall grow not old, as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them.
When you go home, tell them of us and say, For your tomorrow we gave our today. O oh, you who sleep in Flanders fields, Sleep sweet to rise anew, we caught the torch you threw, and holding high, we keep the faith with all who died. We cherish too the poppy red that grows on fields where valour that led. It seems to signal to the skies that blood of heroes never dies, but lends a lust to the red of the flower that blooms above the dead in Flanders fields. And now the torch and poppy red we wear in honour of our dead. Fear not that we have died for naught. We'll teach the lesson that we wrought in Flanders fields. Well, thank you for taking part this morning and um, we can rest a little bit easier now that we know the timings of, of everything leading up to 11 o'clock have been made. And I thank you all for your participation. Uh, those who have read and those who have taken part, thank you. We're going to sing together and I invite you to stand as we sing number 47. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home.
going to share together um, in a moment the, the Bible reading, Bible passage for this morning. And it is just a verse this morning. And it says these words, it's taken from John 14, 27, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. This is what Jesus is saying to his disciples. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. It's a small verse, we'll read it once again. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Just a prayer for a moment before I share the message this morning. <clears throat> Father, I pray as we open your word, Lord, that you will bring new meaning for us once again. Lord, may we be able to really understand what it is that you want us to take from this verse. Lord, as we reflect on the moments of this day, of this week, Lord, we ask as we bring this ancient scripture from many years ago into our lives, Lord, we pray that we will be able to understand what it is that we are to learn. So bless us and help us to have open hearts, receptive ears, we ask in your name. Amen. I just realised the water I'm drinking I think is probably from last week. <laughs> but it was a case of, I did a risk assessment and it was either my voice runs out or else I might catch something. I had the sermon, everything up to date, ready to go this morning. And then the breaking news this morning, that the Queen would not be at the Remembrance Service. So I've had to amend my sermon this morning. And it says, this weekend, the Queen will not be taking part. It's a lot when you have to work off the script like this. She will not be taking part in the official duty at Remembrance, as she has been advised over the past um, few days to be careful, obviously, being out. But then she has now picked up a strain in her back. That must have been very difficult for her and for the nation, because... It's the first time she will not have been present. When you look next time at when the Queen has been at the Remembrance, you will notice that she has how many poppies? Five. Five poppies. Now, it, we think it represents the branches of the armed forces. So we have the army, the navy, the Air Force, the Civil Defence and the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps. But the Royal Family have never actually made that an official statement. Today, we see presented here before us, and I did notice some of you having a look before we started the service, we have different poppies of different colours that were put together by the Three T's Midweek Sunday School group that come. They've decorated them and they've learnt all about them. And I'm sure they've also asked many other questions like the other children do in school at this time of year. Lots of questions. And if you're a, a grandparent or somebody that's been around, then we sometimes are able to answer these questions for them. I wonder if Amy, are you able to come? I don't think they're stuck on there, are they? The writing underneath, would you be able to come and pass me or even possibly read them for us? I don't know. But um, if, I, if you come up here, and I'll pass them up to you. Hopefully they're only blue tacked on. 
Okay. I know you're a good reader. Come and stand by the microphone a little bit so we pick you up. There we are. Take your mask off. Please. There was no preparation in this, sorry. The red poppy. The red poppy is the most famous symbol used to commemorate those who sacrificed their lives in the World War I and the wars that followed. The red poppy represents remembrance and hope and is connected to the Royal British Legion, a charity created by veterans of World War I. The purple poppy. The purple poppy, also known as the animal poppy, is a memorial tribute remembering the service and sacrifices of all animals, great and small, that subsequently lost their lives in service, as well as honoring and recognizing animals within the armed forces who bravely serve and work the front line today. Animals still continue to play a vital and significant role supporting and helping returning soldiers. The white poppy. The white poppy plays tribute to those who died in conflict, but emphasizes an ultimate commitment to achieving peace and challenging the way we look at war. This one is the hallmark of the Peace Pledge Union. The black poppy. It is most commonly associated with the commemoration of black African and Caribbean communities, contribution to the war effort as servicemen and servicewomen and as civilians. Thank you, Amy, for sharing that with us. I'm really sorry, I didn't ask her to do it beforehand. One of the things that slipped my mind, and um, if you know me well, I don't like somebody throwing something I've never read before. You did amazingly well because it was actually no preparation. Sorry. I know I don't like anyone to do that to me, so I do apologise. In Flanders Field, um, Leslie uh, read that for us was written by a medical office, officer, a surgeon, who witnessed the injuries and death on the front line in, in the in First World War. The poem by him is read often and we associate it with the link with the poppies we wear and see today. The second poem, which Liz read for us, We Shall Keep the Faith, is a response to this first poem and reassures the writer of that first poem that we will not forget, we will remember. I watched last night the remembrance service and wasn't aware that it was a hundred years for the Royal British Legion and the poppies. And so a lot was played of the poppies last night. And I'm so pleased that this morning my thought is built around the poppy and it's representing of peace. Jesus speaking with his disciples gives these words speaking about the promised Holy Spirit. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Two artists Two artists set out to paint a picture representing perfect peace. The first painted a canvas depicting a carefree boy relaxing in a boat on a little placid lake without a ripple to disturb the surface. The second artist painted a raging waterfall with winds whipping the spray about. But on a branch of a tree overhanging the swirling waters, a bird built had built a nest, and it sat peacefully brooding over her eggs. Here she was safe 
from her predatory enemies, shielded and protected by the roaring waterfall. This is real peace, the result of remaining calm in the midst of raging trials and difficulties in life. And this is the peace that we are going to learn about this morning. Let us look at this verse and learn all about the peace that is mentioned in it. I'd like to bring out three truths for you. Firstly, we know the exceptional nature of this peace is that it is quite different from any peace you can find in the world. Secondly, we must seek the, this exclusive source of this peace. It is a peace that comes only from Jesus. You cannot obtain it anywhere else. And thirdly, we must experience the effect, the effective results of this peace. It is a peace that can keep our hearts from being troubled and afraid. So firstly, the exceptional nature of this peace. It is that it is quite different to any peace that we will find in the world. You would have noticed that the comparison Jesus used to contrast his peace is the peace of that with the world peace. What kind of peace is that? It is a peace that is said to exist where there is no war or conflict. And this is the peace that does not last. Since the beginning of man's rec recorded history, the world has been seeking for peace. But it has only really ever enjoyed it for about 8% of our time. In other words, very rarely are we at peace. The word that we associate with peace is taken from the scripture, from the Greek is shalom. Now the word shalom itself means more than just an absence of war or, or conflict. It reflects and refers to a sense of completeness and soundness. It refers to a sense of completeness and soundness. Although it is commonly translated as peace, Shalom can be translated as wellness, it, if such a word exists. Shalom may therefore be used to describe a personal inward peace, a deep-seated peace of the soul. The words that we would associate with the opposite to peace would be words like anxiety, anxious, fear, confusion, diverse, division and distress. Shalom, peace, begins with right relationships because right relationships determine all the other factors in life. Isn't that just so true? Shalom begins with the right relationships deter determined that all the other factor, the factors in life. And this is the peace that Jesus says the world cannot give. It cannot give. No matter what the world tries to do, it cannot bring any everlasting and lasting peace. Neither can the world give you the inward peace or the wellness that your soul and my soul needs. So that would be, that's the exceptional, that's the exceptional nature of this piece. Then we have the exclusive, exclusive, it is only found in one place and that one place we know is from Jesus. You cannot obtain the peace from anywhere else. Christ is the exclusive source of peace. In our text of scripture, he boldly says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, I give unto you. 
Seven hundred years before he was born, the prophet Isaiah foretold that he would be, that Jesus would be the Prince of Peace. On the night of his birth in Bethlehem, the angels filled the night sky with the chorus, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. During his ministry on earth, Jesus calmed the storm of the Sea of Galilee. As recorded in Mark 4, Jesus and his disciples were in a ship sailing on the sea when a great storm arose. The waves grew bigger and bigger and, and water came right into the ship and threatened to sink the ship. Then the disciples woke. They woke the Lord and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he promptly arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And immediately there was great calm. And whenever storms arise within our, our own lives, the same Lord Jesus Christ who lives in us still calms our hearts with the same words, peace, be still. Christ has brought peace not only to man, but to the whole of creation. Jesus is truly the Lord of peace and the Prince of peace. Friends, if real peace is what you are looking for, please do not look anywhere else. The Prince of peace is the only one who can give you perfect peace. And it is to him alone that you should resort to, to find this peace that you seek. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. And our third and final is that we must experience the effects and the effectiveness of the results of this peace. It is a peace that can keep our hearts from being troubled and afraid. It's the difference after we have accepted, then we have peace. We have no trouble in our hearts and we are not afraid. Because we have peace with God. How does peace of our Lord Jesus Christ stop our hearts from being troubled? And how does it remove our fears so that we no longer have to be afraid? Well, the answer is that we may have is that is the way that Jesus made this peace for us was by dealing with the very root of the problem and the root of the problem that Jesus tells us about is that we have become separated from God and this was brought about by sin the very state that we were all born into Jesus dealt with our sin by dying on the cross to bear the punishment for every one of us. With our sins removed, we can now have peace with God. We can also have peace with each other um, and peace with yourselves. This is the peace of having one's guilt from sin removed. We can feel the inner peace for ourselves because the guilty feelings are a great source of inner, inner turmoil for you. I've spoken to many Christians who still live with guilt unnecessarily. Their troubles are there, they are worried. The burden of guilt and the fear of retribution can be so great as it incapacitates us completely. Perhaps Jesus is saying to you, let not your heart be troubled anymore by that guilt. Neither let your heart be afraid anymore of the retribution from all your many sins. For I am the Prince of Peace and I have taken away all your guilt and shame and suffering and in exchange I give you my peace instead. The peace that passes all understanding that will keep your heart. So we have peace with God, we have peace with ourselves, and we have peace with each other. 
During World War II, many Jews were mercifully slaughtered in concentration camps by the Nazis. Just after the war, one of these Nazis who had participated in the concentration camps came to a little village and boasted to all his friends there about how he had killed hundreds of Jews. But what he did not know was that there was one of those that heard him boast was actually a Jew whose wife had lost all her family members in those concentration camps. However, this Jew and his wife were Christians. And instead of hating him and seeking revenge, they shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with him and forgave him for killing her and their whole family. When this soldier saw that, he suddenly broke down and cried, realising how sinful he was. With full repentance, he knelt down and asked Christ to save him, asked Christ into his life. And that day he became a Christian. And from that time onwards, he loved God's people and no longer hated anyone. When he found the peace with God, he also found peace with his fellow men. In conclusion, it is really exciting, isn't it, for us to see how sometimes we see people that, you know, hate and despise each other of different race and culture and nationality or social status. We see them become best friends. There's no reason why they shouldn't be best friends. And they love and serve the same Lord Jesus together. In conclusion, we wear this morning, don't we, we wear the poppy and we wear it on our left side because we keep it close to our hearts and this verse this morning that we shared I encourage you also to keep that verse close to your hearts peace I leave with you my peace I give you I do not give you as the world gives you do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Amen. Amen. Our time together has, has come to an end. I'm just going to spend, um, we're going to spend a couple of moments singing our last song and it's Be Thou My Vision. We need for us each as individuals, groups, we need God to be our vision, don't we? If we're going to have peace, if we're going to seek peace, if we're going to look for resolution in our world, then we need to have the vision that Jesus gives us. Verse 2 says, Be thou my wisdom, 573 in the song book, sorry, 573. Be thou my wisdom, be thou my true word, be thou ever with me and I with thee, Lord. Be thou my great, be thou in me dwelling and I with thee, one. Let's stand together as we sing this final song together.
Amen. Let's uh, just share a benediction together. High King of Heaven, Thou Heaven's bright Sun, O grant me its joy after victory is won. Great heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be thou my vision, O ruler of all. God bless you all this morning and today. Amen. Amen.